Hello everyone. Welcome back to classes of Swasthavrita. So in the last class, uh, we discussed about the basic concepts of modern science, uh, the preventive and social medicine, right? The concept of health, disease, and the concept of prevention and all these things. Uh, so let us move on to another basic concept, very important one. And in the same time, let us also learn about one of the important uh, topics, so syllabus points of your uh, course, that is epidemiology. So today we'll be speaking about epidemiology. Okay, so moving forward. So today what all we'll be learning? We'll understand the term epidemiology, discuss the definitions, vari uh, not various definitions, one definition of epidemiology. We'll also know what are the aims and how epidemiology can be used. And we'll try to understand basic two types of epidemiology. Okay. So let me know what you think of this picture. When you see this glass having water, what do you feel? Do you feel it is half empty or do you feel it is half full? Yes, you are already familiar with the term, right? The pessimist will think that the glass is half empty and the optimist will think that the glass is half full. Okay, but the epidemiologist, the person who uh, practices epidemiology is called as an epidemiologist. He will think differently. Okay, so you have to set your mindset to this tuning. So that is why I'm taking this example. The epidemiology will ask first, tell me as compared to what this is half full or half empty. Okay, so you understand the mindset, how it is a little bit different. So we will be comparing everything, we will be evaluating and uh, kind of a little bit of uh, bias statistics mindset. Fine. So let us move ahead uh, to understand what is the definition of epidemiology. There are various definitions again given, like how uh, the health definition was given in the same way. Um, there were various definitions put forth and finally uh, a particular uh, definition was accepted and that is this one. Do not get afraid. It is a big definition, but it's not that difficult. Okay, we'll understand it in a very easy manner as we go ahead. So let us first read this definition. The study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states in specified populations and the application of this study to control of the health problems. Okay, so some of the terminologies I have put in uh, capitals, right? So those are the terminologies we'll be understanding first. Don't take in mind all these uh, different uh, difficult terminologies or something. Which these are very easy terminologies. Okay, so of course you know what is study. Fine. Then comes the distribution and determinants. Then health-related states, and then the term populations, and of course, lastly, control. So let us understand these terms one by one. But before that. Again, we'll simplify these things. So dynamic study of determinants, occurrence, distribution, control, and pattern of health and disease in a population. So now we are speaking about two things here. Okay. So we are also speaking about health and we are speaking about diseases or the deviations from health. Okay. Both of them together. Now, what do we mean by determinants and what are the occurrences? What are distributions and how to control this and how to know the pattern of how it repeats? So determinants are something uh, which are like, a, uh, what you say, kind of a risk factors. Okay, so maybe obesity is the risk factor of cardiovascular diseases or high blood pressure is the risk factor for cardiovascular diseases like this. So you have particular causes or risk factors already set up or you are trying to understand what causes what. So those are the determinants, what kind of population, what age group, all these things. 
Now, occurrence is, of course, as the term meaning goes, what is the pattern of occurrence? How the diseases will come, uh, show themselves in a way. And distribution is the uh, distribution of the disease in a population. Okay, we'll discuss about this in a bit details later. And control, how to bring the disease in control. Then pattern is if the disease is repeating, is it seasonal? Is it uh, like uh, repeating in a decade or something like this? Okay. So yes, the basic term epidemiology is divided into three, uh, is derived from three different terms, epi, demo, and logos. Epi means fall, befall, or on, or upon. Demo as demography. Find the term how it is used in demography. So demo means people or population or mankind. Then logos, you are already familiar with, right? Logi, these terms are derived from logos, that is the study. So in totality, epidemiology means the study of anything that happens to people, that which befalls the man, okay? It might be a disease, it might be a habit, it might be anything. So previously when the epidemiology science was uh, uh, like separately, they were marked as a disease. So at that time, uh, they kept uh, discovering new things and it was strictly meant for diseases which are just Dalila, can you not make sound? Sorry. Uh, the, uh, previously, when the epidemiology was uh, discovered, uh, they were specifically studying uh, these pandemics or epidemics, the diseases which kind of befall a bigger section of population. Okay, so but then later, uh, the scientists realized that it is not the only thing which affects the mankind. There are different things which affect. So all the infectious diseases were considered under this. And then later, again, they thought that no, not only infectious diseases, but there are also habits which can uh, spread like an epidemic, like accidents or smoking or uh, eating too much and uh, weight gain, etc. So everything related to uh, infectious and non-infectious diseases, which affects a larger mankind, a larger population was considered under epidemiology. Okay, so you have a slight idea about what is epidemiology. So in simple terms, epidemiologist will study sick people. Epidemiologist will study healthy people as well. Okay, so why do they study? They study so that they can determine the crucial difference between those who get the disease and those who don't. Fine. So why some certain people get some don't get even though they are exposed to the same disease or same dose etc see for example now let us take the example of the current situation the covid situation there are some people in whom the symptoms rise like anything okay they are very fatal and there are some people who don't have any symptoms they are called as asymptomatic patients so what is the difference how the body type is working how uh, the, the disease is uh, affecting one person and not Okay, so that we study. And then we also study exposed and non-exposed people so that we can determine the difference between the exposure, how the exposure changes a person, uh, physiology of the person, anatomy of the person. So all these things we will understand or we will study in epidemiology. So you can understand the importance of epidemiology right now. Okay, so uh, this is uh, right now uh, need of the hour to understand and think of each one of you as epidemiologists. Now, what does epidemiology do? It describes health events. It cause, uh, and uh, it also describes how the disease is caused. What are the risk factors of any disease? See, the term cause and risk factors are very important. Cause, you are already familiar with Nidana, right? Uh, the uh, causative factor of the disease. But risk factor is specifically used for diseases which are non-communicable, like cardiovascular diseases, obesity, hypertension, diabetes, all these diseases, okay? They don't have causes, they have risk factors. So when you are using the terminology, you have to keep this in mind. Now, 
the epidemiology also studies the clinical pattern of the disease. So what is the clinical pattern? How the symptoms start? How it progresses? Okay, we saw in prevention and uh, uh, the disease progression, etc. cetera, uh, the table in the last class, right? So the same thing is understood by an epidemiologist. So in total, we identify and or we also prevent the diseases. Okay, like COVID was identified and then now uh, the preventive measures were discovered and still we are discovering the preventive measures, how to control the disease, how to prevent it, etc. Right. So in the same way, uh, th this is all the work of an epidemiologist. Now, what does epidemiology do? It provides the same thing we will simplify we'll put it into different terminologies, okay? So it provides insight regarding the nature, causes and extent of the health and disease. See, we are always talking about both the things. We are not partial about only diseases, okay? We are also speaking about the health as well. So we are providing insight regarding the nature of the disease or the nature of the health. We are also understanding the causes of any disease or the health status. And we are also trying to understand how the uh, pattern works. Okay. Now, it also provides information needed to plan and target resources apparently. Okay, see, it, it is of no use. If you get the information data about what is the cause of the disease and how uh, it spreads and everything, unless you use it to incorporate something, you use it to implement to something, right? So this information data, whatever we have gathered, we will use it and we'll plan it, uh, plan the preventive measures or control measures. And we will target the resources and uh, direct them towards a better use. Okay, so this is what epidemiologist does. It is not an easy task. It is from understanding what is the disease, what is the cause, basic and everything, nature of the disease, how it develops, and then use that data to design strategies, design plans so that we can prevent or control the disease and finally eliminate the disease totally. Okay, so we move ahead till that. Now, it is the scientific method of problem solving used by disease detectives. So this is a very interesting sentence about epidemiology. What is epidemiology? It is a scientific method of problem solving. Okay, so it, it, think of yourself as detectives. Okay, there is a special term, disease detectives. So what you do, you find the problem and you start solving the problems. So who all do you need for solving this problem? You need epidemiologists, uh, laboratory scientists, statisticians, physicians, and other healthcare providers, and even public health professionals. Okay, so all this team together will uh, work and try to find a solution for a disease. See, this is uh, a kind of uh, uh, what is going on right now throughout the world. We are understanding what is the nature of the disease. Now we know how the disease develops. We know how it spreads. We have taken all the data and then we are working towards solving that problem. We are trying to form different strategies so that uh, we come out of the problem, right? So this is how the epidemiologists work to get the root of the health problems in a community. Now, what are the aims of epidemiology? Let us understand there are three main aims of epidemiology. Okay, we'll, we'll not go into too much of complications. If you feel it is getting a little bit more technical, just we'll read the three aims and then we'll see how it goes, okay? So the first aim is to describe the distribution and magnitude of health and disease problems in human populations. Okay, so we are targeting ourselves to human populations. Okay, but yes, there are other populations also we consider. It's not like we don't we leave the other population like animals and birds and uh, uh, trees, etc. Okay, that is also uh, is considered. But currently, majorly the aim 
populations. Then, to identify the etiological factors or risk factors in the pathogenicity of diseases. Okay, so what are the causes? Uh, how it biological chemical factors help to develop that disease? Those things also we'll try to identify. Then to provide the data essential to the planning, implementation, and evaluation of the services. So we have gathered these data in the first two aim. And then the third aim is to implement that information to plan uh, or to have a strategy to control uh, the situation. And then to evaluate it and again control. Okay, it is a cycle. So let us simplify these three aims first. So three aims, first one, to describe the distribution and magnitude of health and disease problems in human populations, okay? So we are describing the disease. We are trying to know how the disease is working, fine? Now, then second one is to identify the etiological factors or risk factors in pathogenicity of the diseases. So we understand how the disease is distributed. So maybe population wise or worldwide and everything, uh, whether particular uh, like male, females are getting uh, disease more or a age group is getting more disease. So all these things we are understanding. And then we understand the etiological factors or risk factors or pathogenicity of the disease. Fine. Now, what we do later, we provide the data essential to the planning and implementation of evaluation and evaluation of services. Okay, so it is like a chain, much more simplified. We describe the distribution. Okay, we identify the determinants and then we plan or we implement and evaluate. So what do we mean by distribution? Distribution is we understand the layout of the disease, how the disease is developing. Okay, we'll get to know about these two terms, distribution and determinants in later uh, this, okay. But uh, I hope you are making a, a mental note of these terminologies, okay. So distribution and identify the determinants. Determinants are like age, sex, um, uh, environment, uh, all these, population, everything, or what uh, occupation, all these things are determinants. They will de decide whether you get the disease or not, whether you will be healthy or not. Fine. So this is how the determinants work. And then we plan a strategy. We do a planning. Then we implement that planning. Okay. And once the planning is implemented, we will again evaluate whether the plan is working or not. We'll see to it that the plan is working. If it is not working, there is some problem. Okay, fine. Find out what is the problem. And then again, fix it. And then again, implement and evaluate. So this is like a cycle. You plan, you implement, you evaluate. And then again, you feel, yes, something is uh, something can be much better. Then you go back again for the planning. You correct some things. You change some things. Then again, you implement it. Then again, evaluate. Fine. This cycle goes on continuing till you find a perfect strategy, an ideal strategy, which works. Okay, fine. So you keep upgrading the plan. Okay. Now you understand the aim. Okay, I hope you understand the aim. Now let us see the definition of epidemiology once again. Okay, with this mindset. The study of the distribution and determinants of health related states in specified populations and the application of this study to control of health problems. Okay, so I hope this becomes much more understandable now. But do not worry if you don't understand, we still have some more, uh, 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 what you say, tricks up our sleeves to make you understand these terminologies. Now, remember populations term is used here in the definition. So population is already a plural term. Some of the English uh, experts might say this is wrong. Okay, so no, this is not wrong. Population means a group of people. Okay, 
So when we have multiple group of people, it is termed as populations in bias statistics, in the statistical terminology, language. Okay, so this might not be a general knowledge, uh, general language, but uh, in terms of statistics, you can use the term populations. Populations here, it means, uh, for example, uh, female population, male population, or children, uh, population of pregnant ladies, population, geriatric population, or doctors as a population, uh, municipal workers uh, as population, uh, police force as a population, fine. So different uh, category of people who have a common uh, characteristic. So such people are categorized as one population. Now you understand what is population? Okay, student population, teacher population. So you can uh, have uh, various populations. Now you know what is distribution, how the disease spreads, what is the layout of the disease, what is the layout of the health. So that understanding is distribution. Determinants are the causes or the risk factors, which kind of lead to uh, acquiring a particular status. It might be health status or disease status, okay? Now, health-related status are, again, different uh, like behaviors or uh, different physiological uh, status of uh, your uh, body. So, which kind of lead to uh, either health or disease. Okay, so you understand these terminologies now? Now, control of health problems. Control is... First thing, it is the first thing, okay? When you start uh, treating a disease, for example, a person comes to you with severe pain, what will you do? You will first try to control his symptom because it is very severe, he can't bear the pain. So you will first control his symptom, something you will give to control the symptom and then you will keep on evaluating and then you find the cause of the disease and then you go according to the uh, treatment strategy, what has to be done. Right. Or if the uh, person who comes to you is having severe vomiting, severe loose motion. First thing is you stop the vomiting or you stop the loose motion. And then you start to find the reason. Then uh, Nidana Parivarjana, all these things come later. OK, so in the same way, when a pandemic arises, when an epidemic arises, the first thing what we do is we control the disease. OK, so we control and then we start planning strategies to eliminate the disease completely. Fine. So let us read this once more. The study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states in specified populations. Okay. And the application of this study to control of health problems. Why the term population is specified here? Because... Uh, there are some diseases which are acquired by particular populations. Like, for example, uh, the conductors in the bus, okay, they stand continuously. They are more prone to varicose veins than any other diseases, okay? So that population is having a particular common feature and common disease. So that is why it is termed like that, okay? Fine. So let us move ahead. Uses of epidemiology. Next point. There are multiple uses of epidemiology. If you open the park book, you will find a lot of uses listed out. Okay, around 10 to 15 uses of epidemiology. But let us uh, converge all these uses into four. Okay, yes, but you will have to list out all those. Okay, so, but I, I, I will be discussing these four, but you have to go through all the uh, uses. Okay, so the first one is causation. Epidemiology helps us to trace the causative factors of the disease or risk factor of the disease or the health. Okay, for example, if you have good health, what is the reason you have good health? Are you genetically manufactured like that? Like you are healthy by because your parents are also healthy, your grandparents are also healthy. Yeah, genetically you are kind of programmed or are you using some yukti okay maybe some rasayanas or uh, exercising modifying the environmental factors or lifestyle having good food 
like all these things good habits so so that you remain in the good health so that we understand the same thing applies to ill health is it genetic is it environmental is it nija or is it agantuja so those causes we trace out through epidemiology okay now next comes the natural history this one we discussed in the last class the previous class right so if you are not if you are new to this uh, if you are listening first uh, time then please go to the previous class and uh, do understand the basics so natural history of disease how does the disease work the disease enters inside our body or develops and then slowly uh, kind of engulfs the tissues a particular organ and then a system and uh, maybe totally uh, then it will completely grip the health right so in the same way good health the person is healthy then he will start to have some signs and symptoms maybe fever or headache or something then slowly clinical changes will see we, we will be able to evaluate the disease through uh, clinical examination through questions through uh, what you say kind of examinations laboratory examinations etc okay so slowly uh, you can compare it to the sanche these avasthas till vyakta and bheda okay so then once the bheda avastha has come you identify the disease then you start the treatment either the person will recover or he will end up with a deformity or he will end up with death okay these are the three ultimate results of any disease either you become well fine or you end up having some sort of deformity or even death so that is how the disease works so this is the natural cycle of the disease okay so the epidemiology helps us to identify how the disease moves move ahead what are the next steps of the disease okay so these things uh, we can understand through the study of epidemiology that is second use okay then the third one description of health status of population now what is this description again the term description uh, in the definition also it was there fine so what does that mean so description is you identify you see the layout of the uh, health or the disease status okay so in a particular population for example see here we have the entire population and in that this portion people are healthy and this small portion of people are ill health they are not healthy okay so this might change Uh, uh, in, in given time, like the pattern changes, the disease pattern changes, the health pattern changes with the age, etc. Okay, so just keep this in mind. Okay, we'll discuss this in later. Uh, this. So, for example, here is a graph which shows how the disease pattern is changing. It is increasing, then it is decreasing, and then again increasing. Okay, so like how the COVID situation right now. If you see the pattern of the disease, how it is, it has been like you track the number of the cases against time. Okay, in a graph, then it will give you a particular pattern. Fine, you will understand this how the distribution works. Then the fourth one. is evaluation of intervention very important one so once you have the data about the disease what you will do you will start to check how the uh, disease has come up how the good health has come up for example take uh, okay 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 so this is ill health okay the person is sick he is not able to have, do his day to day works then he takes treatment and medical care okay and then he becomes normal he enters into the phase of good health now he doesn't want to develop the disease again so what he will do he will start taking care he will start to have uh, interventions like 
health promotion what are the preventive measures what are the health uh, services which i can uh, avail to keep my good health continuously this status i want to keep continuously so this process of um, being sick and taking uh, help some interventions uh, to get well and then trying to keep our status of health continued is the evaluation of intention that is the fourth and very important use of epidemiology so you get to know how the things work and how to modify them according to your requirement okay so that is how the implementation works now the ultimate aims of epidemiology are to eliminate or reduce the health problems or its consequences see if it is possible eliminate the health problem totally for example the uh, this uh, polio polio virus is in the verge of elimination we have nearly eliminated it okay so smallpox so we totally eliminate the problem if it is difficult to eliminate we can't eliminate there are some factors which are very difficult and you won't be able to eliminate them totally so what we can do is we try to control them or we try to control their consequences the effect they might have okay by either treatment or different interventions health interventions for example for covid we are trying to improve our lung capacity we are trying to improve our immune system okay so that the consequences can be reduced okay we can fight back in a better way so that is how the epidemiology works then it to promote the health and well being of the society as a whole see this is like our two aims swastha uh, swastha 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 rakshana vikarasya uh, sorry uh, uh, vikara prashamanam okay aturasya vikara prashamanam so in the same way but in opposite they give more importance to controlling of the diseases rather than uh preventing of the uh, disease status uh, in the healthy okay so but you get the point now what is the role of an epidemiologist okay see for example currently you are we are all epidemiologist right now the situation because of the emergency uh, situation around the globe we all are assuming the role of an epidemiologist okay you want it or you don't want it but yes you are an epidemiologist right now so what you have to do so administration of general and specific health survey you have to keep a keen lookout so who all is getting sick around you who all is uh, like uh, is there any departures from the health uh, are there uh, any covid cases so you keep an uh, eye you uh, gather the information okay gathering the information these kind of survey so you are doing specific health survey okay then early diagnosis and treatment as soon as the patient a person sneezes you will start to evaluate whether it is a common flu or whether it is uh, covid or something right so as soon as possible you identify the symptoms and you start the treatment immediately so that not much damage is done next identification and notification of certain specific diseases notifiable diseases are a category of diseases which are already defined according to the country okay so there will be a list of notifiable diseases according to india there will be a list of uh, notifiable diseases according to uh, whichever country in the, around the world okay say for example uh, covid right now is the notifiable disease around the world okay as soon as if you find out there is someone who is having covid you have to notify it to the authorities right so you keep getting the same uh, sms is the, the same thing now identification and notification of certain specific diseases now health education now keep on educating people about how to take care of their health that is what is going on right now how to improve the immunity how to identify the earliest signs and symptoms and to notify come ahead come forth and uh, submit yourself if you have any signs and symptoms so that you can protect the society as well okay so all these things are coming under the uh, job description of an epidemiologist now 
let us come to the last point that is what are the types of epidemiology so again two types descriptive epidemiology see you keep hearing this term descriptive okay now the determinants also but in a different name analytical epidemiology so these are the descriptive and analytic epidemiology are the two branches of sorry epidemiology now let us understand the first one descriptive epidemiology examining the distribution of disease in a population and observing the basic features of its distribution okay so what you do you see how the disease is spreading in a particular population currently for example the covid how it is spreading in indian continent in african continent in european continent so you are trying to understand asian continent all these things okay and observing the basic features of its distribution so it is distributing differently in different continents so what is the reason for it for example this is the status of covid around the world okay see the colors indicates lighter colors are less number of cases darker more number of cases so you can see how the distribution is going on so there might be some features which are affecting the distribution right for example take the african i am in the african continent right now so let us take the african continent okay so okay see for example i am in namibia so namibian continent has very less number of cases compared to other uh, countries okay ethiopia kenya south africa so if you consider uh, the namibian population uh, it, the number of cases is very less so what is the reason so this is how the distribution is understood okay so you understand examining the distribution of disease in a population and observing the basic features of its distribution fine okay now coming to uh, the next type analytic epidemiology this has investigation of hypothesis in it so what it means investigating a hypothesis about the cause of the disease by studying how exposures relate to the diseases okay so let us break it down into simple things we are what is hypothesis hypothesis is you form an idea a theory about something okay you are not sure whether it is right or wrong you are just forming an idea okay this might be the case this is how it must be working right you try to imagine certain thing based on your information so then you put that hypothesis to test see for example covid how is it spreading what is the cause of the disease now let us uh, maybe you will say maybe there is some particular way how it is spreading maybe by touch or maybe by droplet infection like sneezing releases the virus in the air or something okay you put the hypothesis theory uh, and then you start to study actual disease how it is spreading okay so now covid there are different reasons for it to spread so how does it spread it uh, it spreads by touch sorry okay it spreads first by touch or having close contact with the or airborne okay this is how it spreads usually so these two theories you have which one is right are both right or there is only one theory which is right so you evaluate and you try to understand this this is analyzing you are analyzing the things right so in distribution see in distribution you are just understanding the data as it is how the disease is in analysis you are trying to understand how the disease is working the internal factors the physiology of the disease descriptive is anatomy of the disease analytic is the physiology of the disease okay so you understand the difference now okay so yes so what is the difference between descriptive and analytic let us understand this descriptive is used when little is known about the disease 
whereas analytic is used when the insight about various aspects of the disease is already available the information is available then you go on uh, understanding it in a deeper way okay then descriptive is relying on pre existing data and analytic is you develop new data okay you uh, develop new understanding descriptive is about these w questions three w's especially who where and when and analytic is why this is happening okay so now you can understand the difference now this illustrates potential associations like whether the disease has association are there any risk factors obesity is associated whether respiratory health issues pre existing tb or some health issues help in understanding this or not whether it is related and then in analytic you evaluate the causality of the association okay here you understand the association and here you evaluate them understand the difference now both are important in understanding the epidemiology and how the epidemiology works so let us stop here okay so today what did we learn we understood the term epidemiology we discussed the definition of epidemiology and we understood the aims and uses of epidemiology and its types right so i want you to go through this uh, once again with the book you read the basics of the epidemiology and then go through this uh, video once again and then you will understand it in a better way okay so uh, then in the next class uh, we will be understanding the terminologies which we are using for example what is infection what do you mean by infection we use this term a lot right covid infection and all so what is that term meaning so let us understand the terminology uh, terminologies used in epidemiology okay so uh, all the best for studying i hope uh, you if you have any doubts you will contact me please post the questions and uh, i'll answer them uh, try to read it repeatedly it's not at all uh, difficult to understand it's actually a little bit different so if you get accustomed with the terminologies used it will be much more easier for you okay so try to Uh, read it repeat it so that it becomes very uh, easy for you till it becomes abhyasa okay so all the best have a uh, uh, nice uh, this study thank you